Hi, I'm Rick Conlow. I'm glad you're here. Thanks for coming again. This is our third video as we look at leadership and what it takes to be effective, uh, what it takes to, you know, buck the trends. You know, 50% of managers are failing out there. You don't want to be one of them. You don't have to be one of them. You just need to be a student in the game. And if you keep learning, you can learn how to motivate and inspire your team almost overnight. In fact, our first couple videos. We talked about 10 keys to employee engagement. Employee engagement is so bad around uh, the world, quite frankly, that somewhere around 80 to 90% of employees are disengaged, depending on where you're at. Now, there are some companies that are doing better, some managers that are doing better than that, but that's the state of the art, quite frankly, but it doesn't have to be. So those 10 keys to engagement, I showed you how to turn that around today. And then we talked about how do you motivate an employee in 30 minutes or less. How do you turn them around? We talked about the keys to motivation and what we can do and how we can begin to inspire and turn employees' attitudes around so they want to do things and they'll do it because they're self-directed and wow, now you create a whole different kind of high-performance workplace to be effective. That is awesome. So this third one is the third of four that you'll be getting uh, to lead you into how you can become a superstar leader in what you do. We're going to be talking about seven types of bad bosses and how to avoid being one. And I encourage you to keep writing your notes and your thoughts and ideas. We've got a place for you to do that here. And just jot it down. Share your thoughts and ideas. It'll be helpful to all of us because, you know, in the world, there's about 200 million managers, 100 million of them, went to work today and they're failing. That's inexcusable. The tools and resources are there to be more effective. They can be better than that. Now, granted, companies bear responsibility for some of that because they should provide uh, some development and some companies do that and do it very well. Most do it poorly though. Regardless of what your company does, take advantage of every leadership learning opportunity that they can give you. Now, have an open mind. Think through it. You've got to be able to uh, diligently develop how you're going to use those things for yourself. But don't leave it to that. Study on your own. See, Doug and I, uh, who started our business 19 years ago, we were in the guts of organizations like other managers. The same kinds of pressures and ambiguity. We were executives in the last two companies we were part of uh, internally. And you know what? There isn't always a lot of development provided. And even if they do, it isn't enough. And we have made it habit early in our careers. And we've worked in uh, two companies together, not counting WCW partners. And we would tend to seminars and we had to go to the workshops, all told uh, over 120 now, counting what we've done in recent years to keep learning, to be a student of the game. And <clears throat> we found that as we did that, we advanced in our careers and others didn't. They failed. They had mistakes. They didn't get it done. And when we became consultants, that was a goal of ours that we crafted along with a few other people uh, years ago, is we decided we want to provide the tools, the techniques, and the resources to help managers learn. Low cost, no cost. For example, you can go to our blog right now, and there's over 300 resources that are free. All you got to do is watch the videos, read the articles, and uh, get the e-books, if you will, and you can develop your material. Now, we would say, dig into that even more uh, to be able to do that. So that's what we decided to do. We want to give managers who didn't take advantage of the opportunities they had or didn't have them, to have them. And we're trying to make that available to all that we can, to all 200 million in the world if we can. So that's why we've had our business and that's what we do what we do because we want people to win and succeed. And the other side of it is we don't want employees to have bad bosses. I mean, there's no excuse for that. They, they, they ought to be fired, quite frankly. Uh, we did an article on LinkedIn about... Uh, six ways to deal with a bad boss. And I want to tell you, <laughs> we had uh, over 72,000 people look at it and hundreds and hundreds of comments and uh, debate about these bad bosses. And most employees are saying, "There's, you know, these bad bosses ought to be swiped clean, but too often they stick in there. Well, 
Anyway, there's a lot of controversy there, a lot of discussion, and that was great. But we want to get into what do we need to do now. And it's especially important with the uh, poor employee engagement and the state of the economy. We need leaders. These are great times in which a leader needs to be involved in. Uh, they can become a great leader. Because we've had so many high-profile leadership failures. And I just give you a few pictures of some of them. And I'm not going to rehash old news. But they keep coming. That's the problem. And these don't identify all the management failures that happen inside organizations that don't get the press, but impact employees so they hate what they're doing. And by the way, the number one reason employees hate their job is they hate their boss. But there's so much leadership failure going on every day. Poor execution, poor communication, miscommunication, deceit, abuse, uh, not sharing information, just a host of things. We have to be better than that. You've got the capability to be better than that. And wherever you're at, you can learn some things, hopefully you've seen with what we've talked about so far, to drive your career forward and help you achieve all that you ever dreamed about. And these leadership failures cost companies billions of dollars. But what does it cost your career if you fail? What if you get fired? What if you don't get that promotion you wanted? What impact does it have on you in terms of your self-esteem, your belief in yourself, uh, your relationships with other people, let alone the income impact, and that on your family and your children if you're married? We're talking about some serious matters here. And I'm saying to you that everything you need to be successful is there. You've got to be a student of the game. That's what we're beginning to talk about in these three videos. And what we'll talk about here can help you uh, alleviate a lot of hardship if we dig into it. Now, here's the thing. Most of us as managers have blind spots, things that we're weak at, that we don't understand, we don't know, and they inhibit employee performance. I had one manager come to me and he said, Rick, I'm doing all that stuff. And I said, really? And then I heard him on a phone call talking to employees and he says to the employee, what great things did you do for me today? Now I'm here to tell you <laughs> that he had it backwards, right? He was focusing on him, not his team. See, leaders are successful if their team is successful. So help other people win and you'll win. Help other people be successful, you'll be successful. So we believe. That if you want your team to be better, and nearly every manager I have ever come across has said that, you have to be better as a leader. See, I believe employees want to be great, and if they aren't, it's because the leader is the obstacle. Now, if you look at the mass of managers out there today, how effective are they? We call this our manager's report card, and we've talked about this and other things that we've done, but 50% of managers today fail, as I said. 50% uh, of managers didn't know that if you improve service, you can reduce cost. 50% of managers uh, didn't know that praise behavior will be rewarded. 60% uh, of managers think it's wrong to brag about an employee in front of others. And two-thirds of managers don't set goals in writing with their people. What do you notice about the numbers? They're getting worse here. This is the state of the art in leadership and management today. And 70% of managers didn't know that the best way to deal with employee performance problems is through a mutual decision-making process. And 80% of managers didn't know that when you go through a performance review process, you should focus on specifics, not generalities. And according to quality gurus, 80 to 95% of all service and quality problems are management-related, not employee-related. And 91% of employees like and want more recognition, only half say they get any at all ever. Whoa, and all these are backed up by statistics and research we have them cited in our book. What grade would you give these managers? Give them an A, a B, a C, a D, an F? Most people we say that to, and as I said, we've uh, worked with, oh, close to 300,000 managers directly or indirectly to one degree or another. Most would say D or an F. That's the state of the art. It doesn't have to be you. So, how does this affect employee engagement, which we've talked about? So how does this affect employee satisfaction? Well, let's look at a few numbers just to take a look at it. 50% of employees uh, feel like their managers don't make them feel valued. 
50% of employee time is idle. Another's half the time they're not working. And I've seen study after study related to that. So there's a lot of wasted time in the workplace. 55% of employees are unsatisfied with their jobs. Conference board said that. 61% of employees say they weren't treated as professionals and they want more respect. 65% uh, of employees in North America say they weren't recognized last year at all. Think about that. I remember one employee, we were doing a program, and we had time in between them, for one session one day, one the next, and they had an assignment to recognize somebody. And so the managers came back, and one manager said, I had a negative response for my employee. And I said, really, what happened? He said, well, the person started crying. Crying, I said, wow. And he said, why'd she cry? Uh, and he said, well, she cried because she said, I've been here 28 years, first time anybody ever recognized me in this company. Now, this may be extreme, but it epitomizes some of the things we're talking about. 77% of employees say they're looking for another job. Now, let me ask you a question. If that's the case, how well are they doing in the job they have? 80% uh, of employees say they got no respect. Uh, 80 to 90 percent, as we said earlier, are disengaged in terms of what they're doing. And 88 percent of employees say they don't get enough recognition. Again, back to that. So again, what's the state of employees? Are they as productive as they can be here? I dare say not. And, you know, employee engagement, number one reason they quit their job is they hate their boss. Uh, employees that have bad bosses are four times more likely uh, to do a poor job and quit. And, you know, all the research, 87% is the number worldwide of disengaged employees. Wow, I don't know about you, but the state of employees in these companies are pathetic. Now, it's not everywhere, every place. There are better situations. You may be in one where you're doing a better job. You're just looking to ramp up results. That's the good news. Or you may be in a situation where it's tough and you're not able to get people to do things the way you like them to do. That's what we're talking about here. So what are the seven types of bad bosses? Let me go over them quickly and then I'll define each one. And this is uh, what we want to avoid. And you may be thinking of some of the bosses you ever had. Here they are. Dictator. Criticizer. Liar. Harasser. Bully. Micromanager, Mr. Nice Guy. And by the way, if you think of the worst boss you ever had, there's also key habits of bad bosses we want to avoid as well. Uh, yelling and screaming and abdication and uh, belittling people and all of those kinds of things that get in the way. So the dictator. The dictator. It's my way or the highway. They're the only one that knows what to do. You only do what they say and that's it. No input, no involvement. Get it done. I remember I had one uh, uh, top leader say this to me, I'm all for employee involvement, he said, as long as I come up with what I want. <laughs> it was the dictator approach. Or you have the criticizer, and all they do is belittle employees all around. Uh, it's nothing positive, it's always negative in terms of what they do. We have the liar. One sales executive in a company would tell one thing to customers about what they could do, and then when the customer service team had to follow through on, on uh, uh, the agreement and the contract, promises were made that could never be delivered, and then he denied he said it. And then he bemoaned the tough teamwork in the organization. There isn't time for that kind of stuff in organizations today. You have the harasser. And, you know, sexual... Uh, physical, uh, mental abuse. I had one government employee says, my boss is a jerk and he never has anything good to say and he's either, always bothering me about my work output. And he says, I can't do anything. He's staying forever and I'm staying forever. Government, he goes. Well, there isn't time for that kind of abuse. Much of it is illegal. Don't ever want to get yourself in the way of that kind. We have the bully. Be the big tough guy and push people around by position authority. And quite frankly, the power in leadership today is not position authority. It's personal authority. Personal power. That's what makes the difference. It's who you are as a person and how you relate to people that matters most. Now, sometimes I, I agree. You may be in an organization that isn't valued. Um, many are trying to change. But, you know, let's keep in mind. Let's be real here. When push comes to shove, companies go for profit over people. It's the truth of the matter. I'm not saying all, but that's kind of the norm in business. So we have the bullies. They're there. It doesn't work. None of these methods ever motivated people to their full potential. None of them. Then you have the micromanager. 
teach them, uh, people, that, well, they train them like children. You got to look over their shoulder at everything they do. And then the employees looking over their shoulder as well. And there's no freedom for creativity and ingenuity and uh, ability to be more effective in terms of what they do. It's all about, here it is, follow that, that's it, it's done, do it my way kind of thing. And then it's Mr. Nice Guy. Seems to have a pleasing personality, seems like a likable person, but they never make any decisions. That's the problem here. And no consistency in what they do, so really nothing gets done, and so the place is in a constant state of chaos. All of these produce the negative impacts that I just described a little while ago. Seven types of bad bosses. Wow. Hopefully none of those fit you, and if they do, have enough courage. <laughs> to change. And that's one of the things that I want to point out. For us to be more effective, whether we're a bad boss or an average boss, and we just want to get better, we're going to have to change. Clasp your hands together like that. Notice which thumb you have on tap. Go ahead and do it. I know you're just watching a video, but do it anyway. Don't be bashful. Take them apart. Reclasp them with the other thumb on top. What do you notice? The other thumb's on top, right? <laughs> Is it, how does it feel? A little uncomfortable? Sure, change is always like that. Fold your arms like this. Which hand do you have tucked in? Take them apart. Refold them with the other hand tucked in if you can. Huh, can't quite do that. All right. Wow, how does it feel the second way? And then what do we do? We right away go the other way again, right? Change is uncomfortable. Do you have a pen or pencil there? Take a pen or pencil. Go ahead and do it. Thought I had one, but I don't have one right here, but that's all right. Write down your name as if you're signing a check. Go ahead and do it. Now take that pen or pencil, put it in the other hand. Write your name as if you're signing a check. Did this in one program. guy looked at it and said, Hey, I can't read either one of them. <laughs> How do yours look? First one a little bit better? Let me ask you a key question. If all you had was your second hand to write your name, could you learn to do it better? Of course you could. And why? Because you have no choice, right? You have no choice. And with a little practice, probably get a little bit better. Absolutely. And herein is the key about being a superstar leader or an excellent leader or an awesome leader or a good boss, whatever term you want to put on it. There are two ways to change. One way is you're forced to. You get fired. Your boss writes you up. You're evaluated poorly. You miss that uh, promotion. You miss that pay increase. And it has that emotional impact on your life because of that failure. Or the other way is you make a deliberate, positive choice to change. You decide, I'm going to be the best I can be. If it is to me, as the saying goes, it's up to me. So you make a choice. You're going to do it. You're going to be a student of the game. You're going to keep learning. You're going to read the books, go to the seminars, watch the videos, get involved, do all you can. And you do that. You'll bring out the best in yourself. And you'll have a more positive impact on your team. And I want to tell you, I've seen managers do that time and time again. Because when they, uh, a company uh, contracts with us and we get involved, we, you know, and let's say we're supposed to do a few meetings, that's not the only material we provide people. Uh, we provide them our blogs, our website, our articles, uh, all of our resources to help them keep learning in between the sessions that we do. Then we come in and coach and help them be even more effective. And what happens? Boom! They get the results. They exceed the goals. They just don't do 5% or 10%. One company is trying to improve their customer satisfaction for four years and fail time and time again. And in four months, we got them record results. And another company, uh, same thing in terms of having an improvement uh, process and the customer experience. And I remember one of the regional VPs looking at me in the eye saying, Rick, I never would have believed it if it hadn't happened. <laughs> never would have believed it's possible because we've never been able to make a material change in how we treat our customers. So it is possible to get those kinds of results and to do it when? Today, as soon as we start learning. Why? Because we implement something. We try it. We learn from it. And then we go on. We're like athletes training for the Olympics, if you will. How do we get better? We practice every day, and then we review with feedback, and then we go on. So if you have a coach that helps you, your boss, if they aren't doing that, get somebody else to coach you to help you do that. They can give you that positive uh, and constructive feedback to help you correct. You can do it by watching videos and learning and doing case studies and workbooks, all of that. Why wouldn't we put in the same kind of effort that Olympic athletes do 
for their event as we have for our career. Because it's our livelihood. It's our way of life. It's our career. So how do you avoid being boss, bad boss? Or how do you become a better boss? Or how do you motivate employees uh, more? How do you become a better leader? All these questions. Uh, you know what? <clears throat> We've got to be a student of the game. We've got to keep learning. And we also have to believe in the people we're working with. I want to show you a picture of a man I came across and it just gave me an example that, of what the potential is in people. And a guy by the name of Cy Perlis, 91 years old, and here he is bench pressing 187.2 pounds world record for his age. Wow! Employees can do the same thing. Now, I'm not saying they're going to bench press in, the, in the, the business. But what I'm saying is we can do anything in the right environment. We can accomplish big goals, much more than we ever thought possible. That's what we need to be able to do. Now, by the way, one of the things I hear from the managers is that they can't do these things because they don't have time. I say this, you don't have time not to be able to apply the principles we've been talking about so far. People can get it done. Michael J. Fox, Terry Fox, uh, Rick Hansen are all examples of people who had hardships, difficulties. And by the way, some of you may be in that in your organization. Maybe you lost a job. Okay? Maybe you had a bad boss that you're working for. Maybe your company has a you know, dictator approach to what's going on, but you keep the job, they got good benefits. Maybe if your team is stuck and you haven't been able to turn them around. Well, Michael J. Fox, instead of his Parkinson's disease, he's gone on to excel in his acting career and raise awareness for that deadly disease to be able to help other people. Terry Fox got cancer at a young age, developed a vision to raise money, a million dollars for the Cancer Society, ran across Canada, or began to run across, made it three-fifths of the way. Now, the sad fact with Terry is the cancer returned. He passed away, but he... He raised $25 million, and he impacted thousands of people, not just cancer victims, but others who had difficulty in their life, that there could be some hope. And Rick Hansen paralyzed over $200 million he raised by racing to be able to uh, raise money to help beat that uh, injury so that people could walk again. Why am I sharing this again? Is that we never know how good our people can be if we give them the opportunity. That's our job as a leader, to bring out the best in people. That's what we're talking about. So how do you avoid being a bad boss again? Keep learning. Be open to the feedback. Lead with integrity. There's not enough people focus in business today. I've asked myself, who took human out of human resources? <laughs> Too much to company is about data, facts, and figures. And the more we get new and better technology and all that's important and we have to have it, the more we focus on that and the less we focus on people. Have integrity. Make people your greatest resource. And then help other people be successful. And you'll be successful as a leader. It will pay off for you in your career. Our superstar leadership model, as I've shared with you in the other videos, are all about that. Nine key strategies that, when applied consistently, and they're all interrelated, Consistency with trust and with a passion and enthusiasm, you can achieve incredible results. And I just want you to know you can get your breakthrough. The Aquamarina in Florida went out and captured a barracuda and a Spanish mackerel, put them in the same tank of water, and put a glass plate in between them. Barracuda likes to eat mackerel. Barracuda's over here swimming, hungry, sees that mackerel, boom, goes after it, hits that glass plate, still hungry, boom, 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 boom. boom. It stops, swims away. Goes after it, stops, swims away. Goes after it, stops, swims away. Goes after it, stops, swims away. Scientists are observing this phenomena. That's what scientists do. They take the glass plate out of the water. Barracuda over here, agitated, hungry. Mackerel, way over here. Barracuda sees it, goes after it, stops, swims away. Goes after it, stops, swims away. Goes after it, stops, swims away. Why did it stop? There was no barrier. But it thought there was a barrier there. It was imagined. Most of the barriers you and I face is only because we don't know how. We don't understand. We're missing some information. And with that new information, that new training, that new skill, that new idea, we can break through nearly any barrier we ever had. Most barriers all of us face 
are self-imposed. So we need to have the courage to break through. Hopefully you've been seeing in these videos that superstar leadership isn't just about the skills, although that's important. It's also, also about how we bring ourselves to do what we do. That energy, that passion, that commitment. Uh, and that's what our employees need. Jeez, you know, people are walking around like robots in companies. I mean, a classic example of that is the customer service that's provided everywhere. It's mediocre at best. Wouldn't you agree? How many times have you spent money somewhere where you got lousy service? How many times did you get good service? Not much, because there's no passion. There's no inner desire that drives people forward. There's not fire in the belly. They're not spirited patriots working for that company. They're mercenary soldiers. You as a leader can have that kind of impact on the people that you work with. And you want that after all, don't you? Help them win and you win. Now I encourage you to keep writing more information down. Share your thoughts and ideas about this video and the others and uh, share your thoughts with others. Write your comments down. We want to get that out to as many people as we can. Why is that? I shared with you before that Doug and I, we're out to revolutionize leadership effectiveness by helping as many managers as you can, we can have the tools and the techniques and the resources they need to be successful in a variety of sources. And we think that's possible. So I encourage you to do that. We have another video coming up. We'll give you more details. Another technique to use, but in addition to that, how you can continue to be a student of the game. How you can continue to keep learning and be most effective at what you do. And achieve those goals in your career. And make that money you always wanted to make about. And, and have that kind of difference in what you do. Thanks so much for... Uh, being involved in this. I look forward to seeing you next time. I have this dream that soars on golden wings. I visualize your achievements and your legacy that sings. I do not know all about your awesome goals or your persistent efforts to raise the bar. I only know you're the best, a superstar. <laughs> Thank you so much.